podcasters, it's Raina Rikiki, your podcast growth coach. And as you know, I am always cooking up new ways to help you grow your podcast and monetize it with a small audience. For a limited time, I am launching a new one month podcast mentorship program, and I'm offering it to three people for the month of October. In this program, we will work one to one Throughout the month, we'll have three one-hour coaching sessions, and you will also have 30-day Voxer access to me to ask me any questions about podcasting, to get tutorials. We're going to dive deep in how to harness organic discoverability to bring you new listeners. We're going to do a deep dive podcast audit to see where you're leaving money on the table. And last but definitely not least, we are going to be looking at the pathway your listeners take from becoming listeners to super fans. And then finally, excited clients who want to work with you. So if you really are serious about growing your business with a podcast, this mentorship is going to be something you're going to want to tap into. Again, I'm offering it just to three lucky listeners for the month of October. It's normally going to be priced at $1,500, but but for the three lucky listeners, it's going to be $1,000. As a special bonus, I'm going to invite you onto my other podcast, You Betcha She Did, to share you with my audience of rad women entrepreneurs. If you're a man, don't worry, I haven't forgot about you. Um, I'm not going to feature you on You Betcha She Did, but I will invite you to do a LinkedIn Live with me to my fantastic audience on the LinkedIn platform. So if you're interested, please reach out. There will be a link in the show notes. Again, this is only available in October for three people interested in this beta group. All right, happy podcasting. Know that I'm always rooting for you. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Podcast Growth Club, where we teach you how to monetize and grow your podcast, especially with a small audience. I'm Raina Rakiki, your podcast growth coach. Today we have a podcast coaching episode, and in the studio I have Crystal from the Parenting Coach Podcast. Crystal, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Me too. So let's, yeah, let's dive in. Um, If I was going to wave a magic wand six months into the future, you know, it's winter time. What would you like to see happen with your podcast? What's like your biggest goal that's top of mind right now? Um, I don't know if it's my biggest goal, but if I had a magic wand to wave, I would probably 10 times my downloads. Um, I feel like they are good, but they've been what they've been for a long time, like probably a year and a half or so they've been like pretty steady, steady. And, um, I would love for it to increase. And I've talked to people before and they're like, oh yeah, this is pretty average, blah, blah, blah. Like you're at the high end of average, whatever. But I'm like, yeah, I know. But there's people that have millions of down. Like obviously there's a way to, and I kind of feel like I've done the things, like the things people usually tell you to do. I feel like I've been doing those. So um, I would love, I would love to 10 times my weekly downloads. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great, great goal to have. And I, I definitely think it's possible. I know some, yeah, like you said, some people are like, where you're at is great, but you're like, nope, there, there's always room for growth. There's always mm-hmm. room to get new listeners coming in the door, listening to your show. So let's talk about that a little bit. So your podcast is called The Parenting Coach. And who would be your ideal listener? Is there a certain sector of the parenting group that you target? Or is it all parents in all the levels of age groups? I would say all parents, all ages, but the differentiation would be um, what I speak on. So I talk about parenting in um, a different way than our parents parented. Um, And so what I think of as modern parenting is based on connection and based on empathy and shame-free. And so um, that's my jam. People that want to change the way that they were parented and parent in a different way, but maybe feel like it's a little tough to actually implement that. um, That's the group that I'm going for. Okay, good. That that helps give some clarity. Um, so I think the first thing we should talk about is just organic discoverability. So really thinking about the way new listeners find your show. So what is the exact title of your show right now? The Parenting Coach Podcast with Crystal. Okay. Um, is the word the actually in the title or no? Like if you're on your podcast hosting platform. That's a good question. And I think it is. I'm not okay. 100% about that, but I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. So one just quick tip to start with, if it is, definitely take the 
out, the first word of your podcast name is definitely the most important. So having parenting as that initial name will be really good. Um, I think it's really direct, but I also think we should consider adding a title extension. So you would keep the parenting coach. Um, you know, if you want to keep your name on, you can, but I would also, you know, do a colon, two dots, and then add some sort of extension with keywords, thinking about what would your ideal parent be searching for on Spotify and Apple to find you. So for example, you know, you talked about empathy, parenting with connection. Mm -hmm. So it could be the parenting coach strategies to build more connection, um, mm. to parent with empathy and maybe, I don't know, something else. Yeah. Um, I usually, my tagline typically like on Instagram is like shame-free parenting. Um, yeah. that's kind of the, the modality that I'm going to, cause I think most people know that the eighties and nineties were, and before were steeped yep. in shame <laughs> and that's kind of how we convince people to do what we wanted them to do. We shamed them into it. So, um, I think that's kind of my most, like the opposite of shame is connection. So I speak about connection and how to connect with our kids instead. But I think that what most of us really want and really see that we don't want to do is the shame part of it. So I think shame-free parenting is, is a good tagline there. I like that. I like shame-free parenting. Like right now I'm on Apple Podcasts and I'm just going to type in parenting tips and let's just see if you come up. Okay, let's go to shows. Yeah, and I wonder I could put like strategies yeah. for shame-free parenting or tips for shame-free tip parenting or yeah. something. Yeah, and I would put parenting tips because even if I look at parenting tips, which I feel like would be a really good search word mm -hmm. for a lot of parents, it's like you're not showing up, even though you would be a perfect match, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So yeah, it could be um, parenting coach. Obviously, you would say the when you introduce your show, but in the title, parenting coach, parenting tips for shame-free parenting, you know, building okay. connections, I don't know, something like that. And um, Okay. It sounds like you already have a good audience. So I would just say, you know, wherever you reach out to them on your social media or if you have a newsletter, get a, anytime you connect with someone, just start picking their brain and saying, you know, how did you find me? Because um, that's great data. It's like, oh, I was searching for this and your episode came up. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what I see with a lot of podcasters is um, a lot of people who find their show, it's because they know you or they heard you on another podcast, that kind of thing. But you don't have those keywords in your title, that organic discoverability to really help mm -hmm. them find you. So I think that's one thing for sure I would recommend for you, you know, getting them into your show title, putting those same keywords in your description. And then um, it sounds like you've got some good episode titles, but just, you know, maybe pick five keywords you really want to rank for. Like when people search for you, for those words, you are mm -hmm. always showing up. And that could even be going back through old episodes and adding keywords in those titles where it, where it makes sense. So that I think would be a good strategy. Okay. Um, how does that sound to you? Yeah, no, that sounds really good. I haven't done a lot for um, discoverability besides like trying to have good SEO on my pages and then also just like titles of the actual episodes themselves. But yeah. I never thought about the like description or title of the podcast. And I like the idea of adding like tips for shame-free parenting or shame-free parenting yes. tips or something like that yeah. to kind of make it more cohesive with what it is that I talk about it on Instagram also. And I have talked about people, how they found me and nobody ever remembers if they found me on my podcast or Instagram first. They're like, I don't oh. know. It feels like I've been following you for a long time. <laughs> one or the other. And I heard about one from the other or whatever. So, um, I've asked people, but people often don't remember because typically, um, the kind of my current, um, cycle would be they've either they're followed me on Instagram for a while or listened to my podcast for a while or both and then join. And so yeah. then by the time they do, they're like, I have no idea. Um, so <laughs> yes, that would be really which useful. And, yeah. That would be really useful information, um, to see which episodes they're, they're coming in on or whatever, but yeah, yeah, yeah ex exactly. And um, yeah, because that's just that real world, real world data where it's like, how are these new people finding me? I need to know mm -hmm. what's working and then double down on that, right? You know, whether it's yeah. a keyword or or Instagram. Um, okay, I like that. So that's, we got some good strategies with organic discoverability. Um, if you want to, after the show, I have a free three-day mini course that walks you through it and how to track them. And that's been really helpful for people. So I can send that to you. Just check it out. Um, Tell me about podcast guesting. Do you do a lot of podcast guesting? Is that part of your strategy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do. Not every week, but 
but pretty, pretty often. And I have the whole time. And so that does usually work. Like either if I have a guest on my podcast, the numbers usually go up a little bit, or if I'm a guest on someone else's podcast. Um, and in the beginning, I kind of said yes to all the podcasts because I was just getting out there. Yeah. Um, now I'm a little bit more like trying to say yes to podcasts that make sense that are going to be within my audience and also, um, cold pitching or warm pitching to people that I actually know or in my network that I know have a similar audience, but not exactly what I speak about. So, um, yeah, I've kind of done a little bit of both. Awesome. I like two things you said there. I liked how you were like at the beginning, I was just whoever wants me on the show, let's do it because Mm -hmm. it's such good practice when you're getting started, you're building this network. Right. And then, yeah, then you can definitely get more selective. And, you know, since you have a podcast, that is a great asset to use to get on other people's podcasts. So you can, if there's like a higher level show, you know, maybe one of those shows that's ranked in the top 100 or top 200, and you're like, I really want to get on this, you know, related podcast, you can always invite that host to your show if it makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, Because I found it helps, like, if you can add value, like, hey, come on my show first, and then they're more likely to want to bring you on their show. Yeah. And I have done that a little bit. I had someone on my podcast and then I kind of reached out to him and was like, Hey, I'd love to be on your podcast. And he was like, yeah, yeah. And sometimes when people reach out that have a similar audience, I'll ask them that I'll say, yeah, I would love to do like a, you know, a back and forth kind of a thing. So, um, that has definitely helped, I think, um, over the years, but, um, yeah. And I, I do have like, I have a few people who have said yes recently that have like, for sure, like I would say probably end up in the top 50 podcasts, maybe even less, maybe even better than that. But um, so I'm excited about those ones coming out being published yes. and um, I'm going to keep kind of looking for that angle. Um, but also it's a little bit tricky when it's like exactly the same um, niche as me. So I'm trying to kind of like branch out there. So one of the ones I'm getting going to be on in January is like a, as a homeschooling one, which I think is perfect because it's like parents that are all listeners, but they're not specifically there for, um, parenting help. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah, exactly. Finding those related tangents. Um, do you have like a certain set of topics you like to talk about when you're on as a podcast guest or like when you, when you do guests on someone's show, what would you say your call to action is? Like, what are you telling those viewers to do? Telling them to do. So I typically talk about either shame-free parenting or connection, using connection and parenting, why we don't want to be using things like rewards and bribes and punishments and why that doesn't actually lead to intrinsic behavior. And so I'll kind of talk about like the problems that we might have seen or have seen now. Um, I also might talk about just like everyday struggles, depending on how, what the age group is, but maybe like, you know, big emotions is something that comes up with little kids, um, teens and tech usually, or like teens and friend issues, um, trying to get your teen to even like talk to you or open up. So (laughs) it really depends on the, on the age or stage, but I kind of try to narrow down whatever those struggles are. Um, and then my, my usual way of doing it is trying to help them uncover kind of what's going on in that relationship, what, what they have power over and what they don't and how to really like take that power and use it for good in that relationship. Um, and so much of it is about us. One of my favorite quotes is by Gandhi. That's, um, be the change you want to see in the world. And I think of be the change you want to see in your family. If you're like, my kid never opens up, my kid never talks to me. My kid doesn't want to spend time with me. It's like, okay, how, what do I get to do about that? What's my role here? And we actually have a, have a huge role. We have a lot of influence that we usually are not, um, using in the way we want to be. And so, um, that's kind of what I usually show people. And, um, my call to action depends on what it is that we're talking about. Um, I have, um, a feelings wheel, a custom feelings wheel that teaches about self-regulation and how we could teach that to our kids through co-regulation. And so that's been one that people really love. Um, and then I also have a find your parenting personality quiz, which is fun. Ooh. So it's kind of cool. like figure out what your unique style is. Cause you don't actually need to parent in a totally different way. Um, yeah. I based it on like the Myers-Briggs test. So yeah. it really is a good, a good indication of like, this is probably kind of who you are and this is maybe what you struggle with, but also like, these are some strengths. Yeah. So, and would you think um, those are those like two types of lead magnets to direct? Yeah. Yeah. So like for your coaching. Okay. Yeah. And I always mention my podcast too. I'm always like, if you're a podcast listener, which they are, if they're listening then I'm like, come listen to mine also. Um, so I usually, I don't usually do both of those. I kind of pick one or the other, depending on what it is that we have talked about, unless I have something current. So next week I'm doing, um, five days to shame-free parenting, how to change the way you speak to your seven to 11 year olds. Mm -hmm. And so that one is more specific for age and also topic. And so, um, that is what I'm talking about now. So that's kind of what I would uh, be sharing if if I have something uh, current. 
Yeah, I think um, that just got me thinking, you know, hearing you talk about it. Um, Because, yeah, you're definitely trying to use your podcast to grow your business, which is great. But then when we talked at the beginning, you were like, I really, I want to grow my numbers. So I would Hmm. say if that's your primary focus, then when you're on a podcast, um, not only mention your podcast, but try to choose like a specific episode you can point them to. Mm. So if you're, you know, talking about shame-free parenting, you can be like, you need to check out episode 79. I really dig deep and and maybe episode 102. Um, Cause I found like when you give specific episodes that, you know, dive deeper on a topic you're already top- talking on, people are much more likely to go clue into those versus a general call to action to listen to your podcast. Yeah. So that's a good idea. I have one coming out next week called shame-free parenting where I like really dig into what it is. And then I have one on, um, radical connection and parenting. So those are kind of like the two and often like people so often ask about big emotions in their kids, even big emotions in their teens. They're like, I don't know how to handle this. So I often (laughs) do like just naturally in my day to day, refer people to those episodes. So I think it would be great to have kind of those on speed dial be like, Hey, wait, I know the number that we talk about big feelings. And then, um, yeah. And mentioning that, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, you already know, yeah, those are fan favorites, but it just gives people a specific action. It's not too much for them to remember. They can be like, oh, it's number 76. Okay, I'm going to go to that. And yeah. you know, hopefully the host would also link it in the show notes. So it's really easy for them to yeah. find that. So good. Um, yeah. Okay. So for improving your numbers, growing your show, we talked a little bit about organic discoverability, like really mm-hmm. thinking about keywords, how people would find you. We talked about podcast guesting just being a little more intentional with the call to action. The other thing I would say you could do too is paid ads. Have you ever done any paid ads? Um, I've thought about it so often. I've heard that um, paid ads to podcast like specific episodes are really good, but that they're not as trackable. Like you can't really tell like who's actually following through and listening to the episode. You can kind of only see the click rates. So um, I have wanted to do that because I feel like that would be a great way to grow the podcast. And I just always have so many other things on my plate that I never get to that one thing. So yeah. I, I feel like this might be the the only other piece of the pie that's missing, you know, especially because you're in your podcast to grow your business. So you have to, you do have to treat it like a business, right? And invest in it mm-hmm. to get your listeners, to get your coaching. Um, for you even too, you know, not even necessarily paid ads like on Facebook or podcast player apps, you could even think about like some sort of parenting newsletter. I bet you have got a great network of people who might have nice niche audiences, maybe they have a regular newsletter and just reach out to them and be like, hey, have you ever thought about, you know, could I be a sponsor of your newsletter and promote a specific episode? Or maybe you've got, you know, a special program that's coming out that you want to draw more people to, or even just using one of your lead magnets. Um, I think that would be really trackable. I think you're, you would definitely know you're hitting the audience that you want to hit. And usually the price point is a little, a little bit lower too. Um, so that's, that's something to think about. Like if I were you, I would see like, who, who do I have that has a parenting newsletter or, you know, just mm-hmm. maybe there's a homeschool newsletter. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. That you could yeah, reach somebody, out. somebody came to mind that I've, I've been on her newsletter before and um, she has a really big audience. And as soon as she emailed that email, I got like lots of responses back Yes, um, because what she talks about is like kind of totally separate, but also based in shame. So I think that it was like a good, a good overlap there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I would, yeah, I would explore something like that. I think that could be great. Do you have any special programs coming up, you know, this fall and winter where you're like, yeah, I want to. Yeah. So I'm doing my five days to shame-free parenting next week. So that's like a live coaching event every day for five days. And then I'll be opening up a shame-free parenting movement, which is going to be specific to um, elementary age kids this round. And then I'll open up another round for, um, for middle school. And then I'll also um, do one for high school and beyond. So um, that's kind of what I have going on over the next quarter would be, would be um, putting those out um, sequentially. So yeah, that's my next little thing. I love it. I think I think you got a good plan in place. So let's focus on the keywords, adding a title extension, put those in the description, rework some titles, um, keep up the good podcast guesting. Like if you're doing one a week, that's awesome. You know, for a month, yeah. fantastic. just be specific with them. And then, yeah, try a couple paid ads. Maybe try to do one a, a month if you have the capacity, like try the newsletters. I think that could really help grow your show. I think you'd see some yes. imp- 
at this time of and year. And I don't always have time to do as much podcast guesting. So I would love yeah. to find something else that isn't yes. so time intensive I, yeah. because I also, <laughs> I have four kids, I homeschool and I'm like running my business two and a half days a week right now, which is not, I don't want to do it more than that. So I right. have pretty limited hours. So I think that would be a great idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know time is essential, especially when you're a mom. Totally, mm -hmm. totally get it on that end. So we'll keep up yeah. the good work. You, you, Thank I can tell you. you're helping people. I'm excited. Um, reach out, you know, down the road, 90 days from now. Let me know how everything's going. Okay. For sure. Thanks so much.